Hello everyone, the Anti-Pundit is back. It is the weekend of September the 5th, 2014. Now ladies and gentlemen, usually the week of Labor Day is the deadest week of the year for news, but we got some news this week. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start with the beheading of the journalist. Now, we all know about it already, but here's what the president said when he was asked about it. Finally. I want to say that today the prayers of the American people are with the family of a devoted and courageous journalist, Stephen Sotloff. Overnight, our government determined that tragically Stephen was taken from us in a hor horrific act of violence. We cannot even begin to imagine the agony that everyone who loves Stephen is feeling right now, especially his mother, his father and his younger sister. So today our country grieves with them. Like Jim Foley before him, Steve's life stood in sharp contrast to those who murdered him so brutally. They make the absurd claim that they kill in the name of religion, but it was Stephen, his friends say, who deeply loved the Islamic world. His killers try to claim that they defend the oppressed but it was Stephen who traveled across the Middle East, risking his life to tell the story of Muslim men and women demanding justice and dignity. Whatever these murderers think they'll achieve by killing innocent Americans like Stephen, uh, they have already failed. They failed because, like people around the world, Americans are repulsed by their barbarism. We will not be intimidated. Their horrific acts only unite us as a country and stiffen our resolve to take the fight against these terrorists. And those who make the mistake of harming Americans will learn that we will not forget and that our reach is long and that justice will be served. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I brought that video up first only because I'm going to quote what John McCain said on, on CBS Face the Nation, Nation, excuse me. Now, he went on there being a warmonger, and he said, and I quote, the president is either in the Nile or overwhelmed. Now, look, what do you expect a man to do? Go on there and start a war? I mean, that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, he's probably going to get help from NATO, and it's going to be a slow moving progress. And we all know that. Just don't jump in there. Just you go back and say, why did you jump in there? I mean, that's what Congress has been doing, at least on the conservative side. Now, the progressives aren't that much better. Now, speaking of Congress, now probably you probably noticed that they're not even in session right now. So, out of sheer boredom here in the last week or so, I'm looking around for videos, and I found this video from a parliament. So, let's take a look. Given the circumstances, members of the Ukraine parliament decided that having summer vacations would not be appropriate. Therefore, the Verkhovna Rada has officially opened its fifth session, having closed the fourth one on the very same day. The speaker referred to the past session as a productive one, stating that almost 2,000 laws have been passed. A government has been appointed and the 2005th edition of the Constitution has been successfully restated. Early parliamentary elections is what's on everyone's mind in the Rahona Rada, but until then there is a month of lawmaking still to look forward to. Guests, officials and MPs gather for the solemn closing of the fourth parliamentary session and the opening of the fifth one. In the extremely difficult political and legal, social and economic situation, the parliament took the responsibility for the state of affairs in the country, formed the government, and passed a number of vital legal acts ensuring the defensive capability and normal function of the country. After a moment of silence for those perished near Ilovaisk, a number of MPs suggest declaring martial law or at least a state of emergency. A military operation with the regular units of the Russian Federation has been openly launched against the sovereign state of Ukraine. What is of the most importance for us right now? It is saving the lives of people, the Ukrainians. That's our top priority. Today Russia declared war on Ukraine. Today, due to aggressive, brutal and absolutely legitimate actions of Russia, blood of Ukrainian civilians is being shed. Olena Bondarenko, the infamous party of Regions MP, decided to add some controversy to the proceedings. 
the government that sends army to bomb peaceful towns is the criminal one. The Ukrainian army is defending Ukraine and it is defending you as well. You should be on your knees before the Ukrainian army. The main item on the day's schedule is the changes of the electoral law. But first, People's Deputies cancelled the VAT on military import and passed in the first reading the draft law on allocating transport or evacuating civilian population from the east of the country. But as soon as it got to the new electoral law, the work stalled. From a legal standpoint, it's possible to cancel the president's decree on the dismissal of the Verkhovna Rada, pass the necessary law and then pass a new law shortening the term of the campaign. There aren't any possibilities for parties to pass a new electoral law without efforts by the president. The government in power finds this law with 50-50 representation agreeable, so it will stay. Thus, passing the amendments to the electoral law is not impossible. When there's a will, there's a way. And therein lies the problem. MPs, however, managed to approve the resignation of Pavel Sheremeta, the Minister of Economy. As for the next meeting taking place this Thursday, parliamentarians decided to make it a closed one. Denis Prochniak, Oksana Shupek, Igor Plyonkin, UTR News. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ukraine. Much chaos is going on over there. They shut it down and restarted it. We started it within a matter of minutes. Now that's something I like. They're actually out there trying to get stuff done. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, when Congress come back in the session here, I hope that they get something done and stop playing the games with the midterms. And that's a whole different story. Could we all, as Americans, deserve to get the business of the government done? Hey everybody, Lance here. Did you know I have a GoFundMe campaign? Stop on by and help out the real deal. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in this week's social commentary, I want to talk about something. And that's this ALS bucket challenge. Now, I'm not talking about if I'm going to do it or people doing it. Something happened in Bay Village, Ohio during the week. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there was an autistic child who got baited into doing it. And something really bad happened. Now, I am not going to show that video, but I'm going to provide the links below. Now, let me tell you something, folks. I have friends with autistic children. And... It's just so hard for me to talk about this particular subject, especially in what happened this week. And I hope whoever did this gets prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Period. D end. And they better disclose some names. Don't play the, their, the minor crap with me because this needs to be brought wide out in the open. And I know they're trying and they're going to get it done. And they better get it done because I want to see justice done. Hey everybody, Lance here. Did you know I have a GoFundMe campaign? Stop on by and help out the real deal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a short show this week. We're going to the last segment. Now, in case you haven't noticed this week, there were some protests that might have happened at a town near you. It might not have happened. The fast food workers were out on strike again for wages. Now, I'm going to show you this video. This happened up in Minnesota, and here's what happened. Now, I'm not going to sit here and state that $15 an hour should be the wage, because it shouldn't. Now, the actual minimum wage should be somewhere right around $10, like the president said. With that being said, $15 an hour is nuts. And understand something, folks. Most Fast food chains are franchised owned, not chained owned. It's the franchisees who set the wages, not from the corporate level. And some of these McDonald's franchises I know for a fact couldn't pay $15 an hour. And some could. It all depends on where you live and how busy they are. So this is going to get sorted out. This is not about a left-right debate. This is about a morality debate. And we're going to see, and I'll continue to talk about this as the news arrives. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's some news and notes today. Now, I'm trying some different things. Um, as you already know, I already got the new equipment, and that's going well so far. You know, the, the setup is not totally where I want it as of yet. And the next com upcoming weeks and months, I'll be adding some little things 
that you'll notice and I'll talk about that. And I'll always keep you in the loop. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this short show this week. I thank you for watching and be careful. And remember, fear the root.